Welcome to Module 2 of the Access Pain Management Educational Series. Before starting with this module, you will recall that in Module 1 we discuss why we get pain, the protective nature of acute pain, and how chronic pain is different from and needs to be treated differently from acute pain. We discuss that the longer pain lasts after an injury, it's more related to problems that can occur in the body's alarm systems, or in other words, the nervous system. Recent research in pain management has proven that if you are able to understand what happens to your alarm or nervous system in chronic pain, you can learn how to manage it more appropriately. This module will explain to you how your body and specifically your nervous system changes when you have chronic pain. Let's begin by explaining the normal function of the nervous system. The nervous system consists of millions and millions of neurons or nerve cells throughout your entire body along with your spinal cord and your brain. The main job of the nervous system is to provide your brain with information about the state of your body's tissues. So your brain, which is like your body's control centre, can decide what to do. Think of the nerves as structures that detect changes in your body's tissues. When a change is detected, the nerves send an electrical signal or danger signal via the spinal cord to the brain. So what does the nervous system have to do with your injury? As we said, the job of the nervous system is to detect a change in the tissues around your injury. For example, if the tissues around your injury are stretched, have too much pressure placed on them, are exposed to heat or cold, or if they're exposed to chemicals or hormones, the nerves around the initial injury will detect this change. For example, if you have an injured shoulder, each time you move your shoulder, the nerves will detect that mechanical change. When a change is detected, the nerves will send an electrical signal through the nervous system, which goes to your spinal cord and then goes up into your brain. We call the nerves as alarms as they alert the brain of a change. And we call these signals danger signals because they alert the brain that there is an injury or a potentially harmful situation. Matt, we've talked about how nerves usually work. Can you explain how the nervous system can contribute to persisting pain? Well, when pain lasts a long time, the way that the nervous system carries information about your injury actually changes. The nervous system has a property called neuroplasticity, meaning that the nerves are flexible and they can adapt to new situations. So, first of all, the nerves around the initial injury get very good at detecting a change, such as if it's being stretched. The next thing is the nerves get very efficient at sending electrical signals from the initial injury. And thirdly, the brain gets very good at interpreting the nerve signals and producing your pain response. These changes that can occur in the, in the nervous system are called sensitisation. And sensitisation is the main problem that can cause chronic pain to persist. Let's now look at what happens to the nerve receptors in chronic pain. When pain lasts a long time, the nerves change by growing more receptors around the initial injury. Research looking at nerve receptors has shown that there are normally 100 receptors per centimetre of nerve. In the case of chronic pain, the nervous system adapts and can produce up to 10,000 receptors per centimetre of nerve. This means that there are up to 100 times more receptors available to detect a change which could result in pain. What makes matters worse is that each of these receptors become far more sensitive at detecting changes. They only need a small amount of change, such as a small stretch, to set off the alarms. An excellent example of this is sunburn. When you get sunburnt, your skin cells get injured. In order to protect you, your body needs to do something to stop your skin injury from getting worse. Think about the next day after you get sunburnt. If you go out into the sun again, you feel the heat on your skin very quickly, which reminds you of your injured skin. You become alert to the injury or the alarm bells ring about the danger of getting sunburnt more. This makes you cover up and go inside. How does the body do this? Immediately after the injury, the nerves going to the skin create more nerve receptors to detect heat. These are called thermoreceptors there are more receptors available to detect the heat of the sun. Overall, the nerves have become more sensitive to heat, which is now the nerves protecting your body from further sunburn. 
The same sensitivity process happens with musculoskeletal injuries. For example, if you tear a muscle or strain a ligament, the same system operates. The nerve receptors that detect excessive movement increase in number and become more sensitive. The nerve receptors detect small amounts of movement at the injured area and sends danger messages due to the detection of a muscle or ligament stretch. A small amount of stretch becomes capable of sending danger messages. This system is great in acute pain when the injury is new. However, in chronic pain, even though the injury may have healed appropriately, for some reason the heightened sensitivity of the nerves stay elevated. This becomes a major problem because sensitive nerves keep sending danger messages and prevents you from exercising and re-strengthening the initial injury. And this is what actually makes you get better. Let's have another question. Nerve receptors around your injury can send off danger signals in response to A. Too much stretch B. Too much heat or cold C. Too much stress hormones or D. All of the above The answer is D. All of the above. There are receptors which detect mechanical, thermal and chemical information around your injury. A change in any of these things is capable of setting off a danger signal. So Matt, is the increased number of receptors and sensitivity of the nerve the only change that happens? Well, there are a number of other changes that, that happen to the nerves and also even to the brain. Once the nerve signal enters the spinal cord, it connects with another nerve which carries it to the brain. The nerves are connected by a tiny gap called a synapse. For the danger signals to reach the brain, it has to jump the gap between the nerves to keep the signal going. It does this by releasing chemicals called neurotransmitters from one nerve to the other. The neurotransmitter will jump the gap and start the electrical signal in the next nerve. Usually there is a balance of excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters in this gap. If an excitatory chemical jumps the gap, the electrical signal keeps going. And if an inhibitory chemical jumps the gap, the electrical signal stops. In chronic pain, neuroplasticity creates much more excitatory chemicals than normal. This means that there is a much bigger chance of an excitatory signal jumping the gap and keeping the electrical signal going. This means that the nerve pathway from the injury to the brain becomes more efficient and more danger signals reach the brain, which can result in an increased perception of pain. Remember our example of the injured footy player that was able to keep playing with his injury. If you think about the nerve pathway and neurotransmitters, you can understand what happens. At the site of the injury, his nerve receptors will detect the problem, raise the alarm and send a danger message. When that nerve connects to the next nerve in the pathway, the signal needs to jump the gap so the message gets to the brain. If an excitatory chemical jumps the gap, the signal keeps going and the pain is felt. However, in the height of the battle, there are more inhibitory chemicals at the gap between the nerves. If an inhibitory chemical jumps the gap, the nerve signal will stop and not reach the brain, and the pain won't be felt. His body has basically stopped the transmission of the pain signal. These changes in the nerve pathway can occur very quickly and are also changeable. The pain will probably catch up with the footy player the next day. In the case of chronic pain, the overexcited nerves increase the transmission of nerve signals. The good news is that these changes can be reversed over time with appropriate treatment. Let's try another question. What is the result of the additional excitatory neurotransmitters which are produced in chronic pain? A. The nerve pathway becomes more efficient and more danger messages reach the brain. B. People get really excited about having pain and they don't want it to get better. Or C. People suddenly feel like playing football. The answer is A. The nerve pathway becomes more efficient and more danger messages reach the brain. Increased amounts of excitatory neurotransmitters result in the nerve pathway becoming more efficient. This increases the amount of messages reaching the brain, so the brain gets more information about what is happening at the initial injury. Let's now talk about what happens when the danger signals reach your brain. 
Your brain is where the danger signals are interpreted, where pain sensation is produced, and where the response to pain is determined. Research has shown that in people with chronic pain, the electrical signals spread out to many areas of the brain. Parts of the brain that are normally involved with emotions, memory, conscious thinking, fear and anxiety, all start to receive the danger signals. Basically, more areas of your brain become involved in interpreting the danger signals. You should be able to understand why pain can affect you in other ways, such as making you anxious or a bit fearful, and why it takes over your thought processes at times. These nerve changes in the brain are another example of neuroplasticity and how the nerves in your body can become more of a problem in chronic pain. Again, just as these nerves in your brain can become more sensitive, they can go back to a normal level of sensitivity with appropriate treatment. Let's try another question. Which areas of the brain are used to interpret danger signals in chronic pain? A. The sensory area. B. The memory area. C. The fear and anxiety area. Or D. All of the above. The answer is D. All of the above. Specialised brain imaging scans have shown that in people with chronic pain, Many parts of the brain, including sensation, memory, emotion, fear, anxiety and thinking areas of the brain are all used to interpret danger messages from the tissues. Matt, I'd just like to read out some comments that patients have made to me about their pain. So you're saying that the pain is not real and you're saying that it's all in my head. Can you comment on these? Well, all pain is very real and there are physical processes that drive chronic pain. But what's important to realise is that it's not just the extent of the injury. The changes that happen within the nervous system and the brain are very real and physical changes do occur. So simply ignoring the pain or being told to put up with it is just oversimplifying the problem. Chronic pain is a very complex issue with many factors that contribute to it. So we need to understand what contributes to chronic pain in order to effectively manage it. Let's finish with my favourite example of neuroplasticity and how the nerves are very adaptable. Look at the two beagles here. The honest sleep has a nervous system that has a normal level of sensitivity. The customs beagle, through training, has resulted in a highly sensitive sense of smell. A small amount of a certain smell is all it needs to detect banned food. How? Think about what you have just learned. The custom speaker's receptors in its nose that detect certain smells have become sensitive. The nerves carrying this information to the brain have become more efficient, and its brain has become better or smarter at analysing the information about smell and sitting next to the parcel as a result. Your nerves have unwittingly gone through the same process. Due to the sensitive nervous system, your receptors are now better at detecting a change at your initial injury, such as a stretch. Your nerves are better at carrying this danger signal to the brain. And your brain has become better at analysing the information and creating a pain sensation. Although these changes are currently causing your pain to persist, the good news is that neuroplasticity is reversible and we can help you to desensitise the system. Let's try another question. Why does a customs beagle have such a good sense of smell? A. They have excessively large noses. B. They're really hungry. Or C. Their training has made the nervous system sensitive to smell. The answer is C. Their training has made their nerves sensitive to smell. The training has used neuroplasticity to make their sense of smell very sensitive. They only need a small amount of the scent of a banned food to set off their alarms. Here is a quick summary of what we have covered in Module 2. We discussed how there are complex changes to how your nervous system processes pain in the chronic phase, and this sensitisation process can be the main reason why your pain can persist. It is important to understand these changes because we will use this information to explain to you how to manage chronic pain more effectively.